Hi guys, welcome to Bite Size Excel. In this video, we're going to take another look at Excel tables and more specifically, how we deal with formulas in Excel tables. Now, while Excel tables have a number of benefits, such as keeping your headings at the top when you scroll, adding new data in when you go to the end of a column, or easily adding a new row by hitting tab, one of the other key benefits of tables is that you can make your formulas really consistent but it is important to understand how formulas are structured in tables because it is slightly different to how you might be used to seeing them. So in this example, it's the same example we used in the previous video of a stock list. And what we want to do is put in the inventory value by multiplying your unit price by a quantity in stock. Now, obviously in a normal formula, this would be your cell reference multiplied by your other cell reference to give you your value. However, when you do it within the table, it does look slightly different. So we hit equals, we select our unit price, and you'll notice that the formula comes up with at unit price. Basically, it's using the column heading, and then when we hit multiply, it's by the other column heading. And when we hit enter, it will automatically fill down the entire column with the same formula. However, each cell will point to the corresponding row, making your formula consistent across the table. Also, if we go to the end and add in another row, your formula here will just copy down for you. So there's two ways in which we can do our formulas. We can do it like I've just done, where you click on the cells to put in the formula, or we can do it by opening a square bracket, selecting the item that we want. In this instance, it's item sales last quarter. Hit tab to complete and close the brackets. And we want to multiply that by our unit price. So open our brackets, unit price, tab to complete it and close our brackets. And once again, when we hit tab, it will automatically copy it down. Now, within our table, we can also refer our formula to either our total row or our header row. So in this instance, we want to find out what percentage each sales value is of the total sales. So for that, it's equals. We want our sales value. So again, at sales value. And we want to divide that by the total. And what you'll notice here is it comes up in a slightly different format, which is table one, open the brackets. Then there's this hashtag totals within square brackets, comma, and sales value. And when we hit enter, it will copy that formula down and it will always refer to this total cell. Equally, if we want a cell to refer to the header column for one reason or another, we can hit equals and it's table one hashtag headers in the formula. So just undoing that, using either the headers or the totals can be particularly useful if you are trying to do, say, a Dashboard summary, if you've got lots of tabs with lots of tables named, if you've got your tables named in a very sensible manner and your column headings within your table named, it can make it very quick to do a summary tab. So just to do an example, I'm just going to copy this table into a second table. So you can see now this is called table 13, this is called table one. And for argument's sake, let's just change our values slightly. Okay, if we then want to do a summary outside of our table, so table one sales, table 13 sales. So we would hit equals and say you want your total sales value. You'll see that the format for pointing a formula outside of the table to a particular total is the name of the table, open your square brackets, then hashtag totals in your square brackets, comma, and the column you want it to point to. We can then just copy this down into the next one. And if we want the same total in table 13, we can update this to table 13. And say we didn't want the sales value, we can click in here, come out, and say we want the inventory value, we can click on that and tab it over, and it will give you this inventory value. If you have a lot of tables that are named in a very specific way and you want to create a summary dashboard, this can be a really quick and handy way to do it. So that's just a quick introduction as to how you might use formulas within tables. In my later videos, I'm going to take a look at some of the other options that you can use in Excel tables and some of the advanced functionality. If there's anything particular that you'd like me to cover, please do let me know. I hope that you found this brief introduction useful. Please do like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.